Hey guys, it's Kevin again, and with the Emmy Awards being tonight, I figured it would only make sense for me to do my nomination predictions uh, for the Emmys. If you guys don't know how I'm going to do this video, I go through each category, I talk about you know the nominations, I talk about what I think will win and should win, but of course there are a lot of categories. Now, I'm not going to go through obviously every single category, I'll say that right now. Uh, there are just there are too many categories. This video would be too long to do that. So I'm going to talk about the ones I know you guys want me to talk about, such as you know limited series, drama, and comedy. I'll talk about all of those things like uh, makeup, hairstyling, sound. You know, I'll talk about those when the show happens, but I just don't really have predictions for those, so I can't really say that. But I will do comedy, drama, and limited series movie. I'll do all of those. So let's just get right into it. Starting off with the limited series ones. I will definitely say, though, for a lot of these nominations, it is a very tight race, and I really do not know who's going to get it um, for a lot of these. Honestly, like I said, a lot of these I'm just kind of predicting, and I just am kind of, some of these I might just say a name to say a name, but a lot of these, I mean, I'm overall very happy with this year's nominations, but let's just get right into it. So for outstanding writing for a limited series, movie, or dramatic special, we have Fargo, uh, Noah Hawley for Fargo, Bob De Laurentiis for Fargo, David Farr for The Night Manager, D D.V. DeVentices for, uh, sorry if I'm pronouncing the names wrong, for The People vs. O.J. Simpson, Scott Alexander and Larry uh, Kazerweski for The People vs. O.J. Simpson, and Joe Robert Cole for The People vs. O.J. Simpson. Now, this one's really a toss-up because all of these writers are really great. Obviously, I didn't watch The Night Manager, but I think both the episodes written for Fargo were two of the best written episodes of the season, and then the three episodes uh, written for People vs. O.J., I mean, all three of the episodes were there wasn't a single bad episode for Fargo or American Crime Story, but the ones they pick, I definitely would agree with. Um, but the one I think is probably going to get it, I don't really know. I feel like uh, it's either going to be a toss between Joe Robert Cole or D.V. Uh, Deventuses, because what they were able to do in both of those episodes, you know, developing the character of Marsha in the all Marsha Clark Center episodes and get us to really understand her, or developing Darden's character and the feud with him and Cochran, I think that definitely they have a very good chance of winning. I don't know which one, um... However, I think Noah Hawley and uh, Bob De Laurentiis also have a very good chance because, again, the stuff they wrote for Fargo was really great, especially in Fargo Season 2. Those are two of the great episodes of Fargo. I mean, every episode of Fargo Season 2 was amazing. There wasn't a single good episode in there. They were all great, so definitely, I think... Either of these writers have a great chance of winning. I really can't give you a name here. It's very hard because these were all great episodes. And uh, I think it's probably going to be People vs. OJs because there's more, but it could be Fargo. I don't know. I'm just going to say American Crime Story right now just because I think there's more. But we'll have to see what happens with that uh, when the show happens tonight. So for Outstanding Direction for a Limited Series Movie or Dramatic Special, we have Jay Roach for All the Way, Noah Hawley for Fargo, Suzanne Beyer for The Night Manager, Ryan Murphy for uh, Pew vs. O.J. Simpson, John Singleton for Pew vs. O.J. Simpson, and, and Anthony Weminghay for Pew vs. O.J. Simpson. And again, Pew vs. O.J. Simpson is nominated for a ton of shit. I mean... They are really overshadowing a lot of uh, the limited series stuff, like Fargo and Pure vs. Zoja. Those are two names you're going to hear a lot. Nightmare as well, but those two especially, I think we're going to see a lot from Fargo and a lot from Pure vs. Zoja um, when it comes to limited series. And I think it's either going to be all Fargo or all Pure vs. Zoja. I don't really see it being some Fargo, some Pure vs. Zoja. I think it's going to be either all, you know, one or the other. So that's kind of how I see it. Uh, for me, I think the best directing, I think Noah Hawley's directing in Fargo, which is, he just has such a distinct way of directing. Not that American Crime Story was bad, I think the directing in P vs. OJ was just amazing and was directed to perfection, but the directing by Noah Hawley, he just has this really great style for Fargo, and I think his stylistic choices just work very well in that show, and I think he definitely has the best chance of winning. But at the same time, John Singleton, I mean, he by far was one of the best things about uh, P vs. OJ, so I think he is a very a chance as well. So I think it's a toss in between those two. Well, again, we'll have to see what happens, but that's what I'm thinking is going to happen. I think it's either going to be Noah Hawley or John Singleton. 
Ryan Murphy is a good director, but I don't know if he was the best thing about it. In fact, I can't really give the credit to Ryan Murphy because he's not the great thing about that show. He just produced that show. He only directed, you know, he never wrote an episode. And because of that, I don't really know if I would give it to Ryan Murphy. You know, he's not really the thing that made that show so great. The thing that made it so great was John Singleton, what, you know, was a John Singleton or a Anthony Hemingway. People who were able to tell these stories and keep it real and to put you in the moment and just make you feel like you're solving this case with them and really just show how tough of, of a case this was to solve and what the case did to everyone. I think they just did that very well here. Fargo very much did the same thing though, you know, it was an ensemble piece. It focused on so many different characters and what it did to them and I really did love it overall. So like I said, I think it's either going to be Noah Hawley or John Singleton, but we'll have to see what happens, uh, but that's pretty much what I think is, you know, who the front runners are. Alright, so now we get to the good stuff, which is supporting actor in a limited series or movie. We have Jesse Plemons for Fargo, Bokeem Woodbine for Fargo, so happy he got nominated, Hugh Laurie for The Night Manager, David Schwimmer for The Pew vs. OJ, John Travolta for Pew vs. OJ, and Sterling K. Brown for Pew vs. OJ. Let me just say, I am very happy that basically everyone got nominated for Pew vs. OJ because there wasn't a single bad performance in the bunch. Honestly, I think John Travolta was great. I'm going to rule out to you, though. I don't think David Schwimmer is getting it, and I don't think John Travolta is getting it. I think this is neck and neck between Sterling K. Brown and Bokeem Woodbine. Both of them were incredible in the show. Mike Milligan is one of the best characters to come out of Fargo. He might honestly be the best character, I think, neck and neck with Peggy for season two, but Bokeem Woodbine just absolutely killed it in that role. He just did a great job. That Shakespearean-like dialogue they gave him I thought was incredible. And then, who can forget Sterling K. Brown's performance as Christopher Darden? I mean, this was such a sympathetic character who really just wanted to do the right thing and really ended up, you know, becoming someone who was an unsung hero to someone who became this vocal-like figure and really displayed all of this pathos, and I think he just gave an incredible performance, and Sterling K. Brown, I hadn't have heard of him before, neither had I have a Bokeem Woodbine, I think either one of them is going to get it. I think either one of them are deserving, and I'm just very happy that both of them got nominated, because they both are great, I definitely would like to see both of them get it, if I had to pick one, I'm going to say Sterling K. Brown, I think is the one that's going to get it, but Bokeem Woodbine, I think is a very good chance as well, uh, but we'll have to see, I think it's neck and neck between those two, and we'll have to see what happens when, you know, the winner's revealed tonight. So for supporting actress in a bet in a limited series or movie, I don't think it's as much of a toss-up. I think it's definitely kind of clear who's going to get it. But we have Melissa Leo for All the Way, Regina King for American Crime, Sarah Paulson for American Horror Story Hotel, Kathy Bates for American Horror Story Hotel, Gene Smart for Fargo, and Olivia Coleman for The Night Manager. Now, a lot of these performances I can't really say much about. Like, Melissa Leo I thought was really good in All the Way. I think this is probably neck and neck with Kathy Bates and Gene Smart. I think either one of them are going to get it. Uh, for me, if I had to pick, I would say it's probably going to go to Kathy Bates just because I feel like her performance is much of a following. Sarah Paulson could get it as well, because keep in mind, Sarah Paulson is nominated for both Sally and Billy Dean Howard, which I think is really impressive that she played both roles, and I think she could get it, but she's also nominated for Best Actress, so I don't know if Sarah Paulson could get two in a row, but we'll have to see what happens tonight if that does happen. I think it's going to go to Kathy Bates. Iris is the best role she's played in the show so far. I think it's going to change in Roanoke, but I think so far, at least, this is one of the best roles she's played. I really love the character of Iris overall. I thought she was a very sympathetic character, but I also was a huge fan of Floyd. Just her protective nature and, you know, just the shelter she kept over all of her boys, I thought was such an interesting character and was so investing as well because you knew that Floyd was going to die at some point and I really love what they do with their character. She was fantastic. I thought both these characters were great. I think Kathy Bates is going to be the one to get it, but we'll have to see what happens. Again, it's kind of a toss-up because they're all really great performances. Can't really say much about the Night Mantra, obviously, but I think it's either going to be Kathy Bates or um, Gene Smart. So now we get to the big ones, guys, which is Outstanding Lead Actor in a Limited Series or Movie, and there are a lot of possible nominations here, but there is definitely one big snub that I'm definitely going to get into. First of all, we have Brian Cranston for All the Way, Idris Elba for Luther, 
Bandit Cumberbatch for Sherlock the Abominable Bride, which really isn't a limited series. It was a special, so you really can't count that, even though it was part of the show. It really wasn't, uh, but Tom Hiddleston, the Night Manager, Courtney B. Vance, obviously, for People vs. OJ, and Cuba Gooding Jr. for People vs. OJ. One huge snub that I am so surprised about is Evan Peters for Hotel. How the fuck did he get snubbed? This is the best role that Evan Peters played. You cannot tell me that he wasn't unrecognizable in that role, because he was. I did not see Evan Peters. I saw the character Mr. March, and I have no idea why he was snubbed. I mean, I believe he's been nominated before, so I have no idea why they snubbed him here. It really is, I, I have no idea, honestly. It's, it, it just doesn't make sense to me, really. I mean, he plays, like, he gives the role of his life, I think, in Hotel, probably the best role he's ever played, uh, tied with Quicksilver, obviously, but I'm so surprised that he didn't get nominated, but I think this is obviously gonna go to Courtney B. Vance. I don't really think there's any other option. He absolutely slayed it in that role. He was one of the best parts of that show, without a doubt. Just everything Cochran said, even if you didn't agree with him, you felt like you were doing something wrong by not agreeing with him. You felt like you were a bad person for not agreeing with him. He made you feel guilty in that role. He made you really sympathize with him. Like I said, even though Cochran wasn't the greatest guy, he made you side with him, and you really did feel bad for him. When things didn't go his way, you did feel bad for him. You wanted things to go well for him just because of how great Courtney B. Vance was in that role. I thought he did an incredible job as that character. One of the best performances I've seen all year, without a doubt, and I think... There's really no contest here. He is getting it. I, I don't really think anyone else has a good chance. I think Cuba Gooding Jr. was great, but let's face it, I do think he was the weakest actor in that show, definitely. I think by far, um, uh, Courtney B. Vance needs to get it. I'll be very surprised if he doesn't, and I really don't think there are any other uh, frontrunners here. I think he is the frontrunner. I think he's going to get it, and I really don't think there's anyone else that could possibly beat him. So for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Limited Series of Movie, we have another snub that I definitely am going to get into, but first we have Felicity Huffman in American Crime, Lily Taylor for American Crime, Carrie Washington in Confirmation, which why was she nominated? I heard that was so boring. I don't know why she was nominated, but whatever. Kirsten Dunst for Fargo, Audra McDonald for Ladies' Day at Emerson's Bar and Grill, and Sarah Paulson for Pua vs. OJ. Um, I really don't know why Carrie Washington was nominated. I would have replaced her with Lady Gaga for her hotel, or even, I'd say, um, you know, Chloe Savengi, someone from hotel, there's no one from hotel here, it's kind of bizarre, because there's someone from hotel in every other single, in every other category, so I don't really know why someone was nominated here, but I think this definitely, there's a lot of good choices here, Lily Taylor was really great in American Crime, I know I only watched four episodes, but she really was fantastic from what I saw, for me, personally, I really want to see Kirsten Dunst give this. I think it's the best performance she's ever given is Peggy. Such a complex character, such an interesting character, and really just show Kirsten Dunst's range because she does get a bad rep uh, for things she's been in, and I think this really redeemed her acting. You know, she hadn't done something in a while, and I think Peggy Blumquist was that great role for her that we're going to look back and we're going to say that is Kirsten Dunst's role. But, I mean, no, I, I mean, it's really no secret that Sarah Paulson absolutely owned the role of Marsha Clark. She was fantastic in that role. I think it might be better than anything she's done in American Horror Story. I think she was just incredible in that role. What, there were so many complexities with that character, what that character went through, the way that character let the, pub, you know, let the public get to her, uh, just everything they did with her was so great. I love what she did there. If, if either Kirsten Dunst or Sarah Pauls, and I want to see either one of them get it. Kirsten Dunst is the one that I personally would want to see because I loved everything about Peggy Blumquist, but I also loved everything about Marsha Clark. So either one of them get it. We'll have to see. I'm going to put it this way. If Sarah Paulson gets, um, you know, Best uh, Supporting Actress, I don't see a scenario where she gets Best Actress as well. I just don't really see that happening. So I think it's either going to be Kirsten Dunst or Sarah Paulson, but we'll have to see what happens. I honestly don't know, and uh, that's what I think is going to happen most likely. So now we go to probably the one category that I'm very skeptical about and don't really know what to pick, and that is Best Television Movie. We have A Very Merry Christmas, All the Way, Confirmation, Luther, and Sherlock the Bomb of Bride. Now I don't really know why Luther is considered a movie since it was four episodes, which is kind of bizarre, but I don't know, I guess four episodes qualifies as a movie, but whatever. 
Anyway, I really don't know who's going to win this. I feel like it's going to be all the way, mainly because of all the things it has. It has Brian Cranston. It's produced by Spielberg. You know, it was directed by Jay Roach. It just it has all those ingredients to win uh, for best television film. But at the same time, I feel like Confirmation, for some reason, has a good chance of getting this. I don't think it's going to be Very Merry Christmas. That wasn't even really a movie. It was a special, and it really wasn't that great either. So I don't really know why that was nominated, but... All the way, I feel like that definitely has a very good chance of getting it. I think that probably is the front runner, but we'll have to see what happens. I honestly don't really know who's going to get it, but we'll have to see what happens with that. I really loved All the Way, as you guys know. I thought it was a really great movie about Lyndon B. Johnson and portraying his life, and I think Brian Cranston definitely slayed it in that role, but at saying television film, I really don't know. I haven't seen most of these movies. I can't really judge most of them, and uh, some of them aren't even movies, so I really don't know what's going to happen here. We'll have to see what happens tonight, but like I said, this is the one category that I'm just kind of skeptical about and don't really know who's going to get it. But then we go to Outstanding Limited Series, which this category is very tight race. Let me just say that right off the bat. Because you have American Crime, followed by Fargo, followed by Roots, then The Night Manager, and The Pupa vs. OJ, which... All of those have been acclaimed for so many different reasons, and a lot of them are very similar. Like, a lot of what you'll find in Roots, you will find in Pure vs. OJ. But then, of course, there's Fargo, and Fargo, as we know, is so great, and American Crime so great. I honestly don't know who's going to win here, but... If I had to guess, I'm going to guess Pua vs. OJ because that show just blew up. It came out of nowhere, really. I mean, it seemed like this was something that everyone thought, it's not going to be that great, or it's going to fail, or it's just not going to be, you know, what we thought it was going to be. But it ended up being so much better than it could have been. Probably better than American Horror Story, honestly. I love everything about American Crime Story, but I also love everything about Fargo. So I really don't know. I think it's, like I said, neck and neck between those two. But Roots as well, I'm not, I can't really count out Roots because Roots was so well done. It was the perfect way of remaking a miniseries without actually remaking it and telling its own story and adding things that wasn't in the miniseries before that I really loved and bring it to a new generation. I loved everything about the new Roots miniseries. You guys know that as well as American Crime. I only watched four episodes, but I heard that was really great as well. So I honestly don't know. We'll have to see. I feel like it's going to go to People vs. OJ, but I, I really don't know. I think that has the best chance, but we'll have to see what happens with that. Um, I'm not surprised American Horror Story wasn't nominated. I'm a little bit surprised, but not too surprised because People vs. OJ was just so much better than that. But either way, I think that's going to be the one to get it. We'll have to see what happens there, uh, but I'm pretty sure that that most likely is what's going to happen. It's going to be People vs. OJ, but I think Fargo, Roots, and American Crime have just as good of a chance. Now, the only reason I rule out the night manager is because those just aren't as popular and they're not as big as some of those other shows i mean i heard they were really it was a really great show but i know that people versus oj and fargo have a much better chance i think than night manager so that's why i rule it out again guys uh if i'm wrong about any of these just let me know because i'd love to hear your thoughts on it but those are all limited series so now we're going to get into the comedies so for Outstanding Writing and for a comedy series, we have Catastrophe, Episode 1, Rob Delaney and Sharon Horgan, Master of None for uh, Aziz Ansari for Master of None, Dan O'Keefe for Silicon Valley, Alec Berg for Silicon Valley, David Mandel for Veep, and Alex Gregory and Peter Hewick for Veep. And I think it's probably going to go to Veep. Veep always slays when it comes to comedy and the Emmys, and I think this year it's going to be no different. It seems like every year I'm hearing Veep this, Veep that, Veep 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 and i've heard it's an incredible show i've heard it's hilarious and i always say i'm gonna watch it but i just don't uh but veep i've heard incredible i've heard amazing things about i've heard it's a hilarious show and i feel like that is pretty much a no-brainer i think it's probably gonna get best writing if not that then silicon valley i've heard both of those shows are very well praised they get a lot of you know nods and things like that and i feel like they definitely have the best chance of getting uh, outstanding writing now, as you guys know, I don't watch a ton of comedy on TV. I do watch a few, but a lot of the stuff nominated for Outstanding Comedy, I don't have a ton to say about, so I could be very wrong with my predictions. But anyway, let's just jump into it, starting off with writing for a comedy. So for Outstanding Directing for a Comedy Series, we have Aziz Ansari for Master of None, Mike Judge for Silicon Valley, Alec Berg for Silicon Valley, Jill Soloway for Transparent, Chris Addison for Veep, David Mandel for Veep, and Dale Stern for Veep. So, and again, I feel like Veep has the best chance of getting this stuff. I don't know why, um, exactly, you know, I, I don't know why, it's, it's nominated for a ton of shit, um, 
But uh, I think Transparent as well has a really good chance. You know, I've seen a couple episodes, and it's really good at what I've seen. Jill Solway does a great job directing that show. So I think she has a very good chance of getting it, as well as Silicon Valley. So again, I think it's a toss-up between those three. But again, we'll have to see what happens. Again, I don't have a ton to say because I don't watch these shows. But that's what I have to say about that one. Now, the next two nominations I'm going to talk about actually already have winners. So it's kind of hard to predict. But I am going to say each of the nominations, and then I'm going to say who won. So for Outstanding Guest Actress in a Comedy Series, we have Tina Fey and Amy Poehler as co-hosts, Melissa McCarthy as host, Amy Schumer as host for Saturday Night Live, Christine Barinsky for The Big Bang Theory, Lori Metcalf for The Big Bang Theory, and Meloria Hardin for Transparent. And no surprise here, this went to Tina Fey and Amy Poehler for Saturday Night Live, and very good that went to them. You know, they start out on Saturday Night Live, and they become so big since then, and we've known that these two have worked very well together between the Golden Globes and all the stuff they've done. They, you know, they've done movies together, they've just done so much together, and... It's great to see them nominated, so congrats to them for winning Outstanding Guest Actress. And then for Guest Actor in a Comedy Series, we have Peter Scholarly for Girls, Tracy Morgan for Saturday Night Live, Larry David for Saturday Night Live, Bob Newhart for The Big Bang Theory, Bradley Whitford for Transparent, and Martin Mull for Veep. And again, this went to Peter Scolari for Girls, which I really do love the character of Tad. I think he's a very interesting character overall. Uh, just seeing the transition that he's going through with being gay and his relationship with Hannah, I think is very interesting. So congrats to him for winning that. I think he definitely does deserve it. Um, definitely one of the best parts of this season was redeeming Hannah and going more into her family life. And I think Tad definitely was a big part of that. So congrats to him for Outstanding Guest Actor in a Comedy Series. So for Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Comedy Series, we have Louis Anderson for Baskus, which congrats to him for getting that. Andre Barr for um, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Keegan-Michael Key for Key and Peele, the last time he will ever be nominated, which is just really sad. But, you know, Ty Burrell for Modern Family. Titus Burgess for Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Matt Walsh for Veep. And Tony Hale for Veep. Now, I know every year this has gone to Tony Hale, and I heard he's great on that show. But I feel like this year it's going to go to someone else. I just don't see Tony Hale winning it. He might, but I feel like this is going to go to someone else. First of all, let me just say how happy I am that Louis Anderson got it for Basket. She was by far, I mean, he was, I say she because he played a she. He is an actor in real life, and he was one of the best parts of the show by far. You just believe that he was a woman and what he was going through with the character. I mean, Baskets was just such a great show because of that, and very happy to see that he was nominated. Um, but of course, Titus Burgess, how can you not forget Titus and Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt? One of the best parts of that show, in my opinion, I mean, one of the reasons season two was so great is because it dived deeper into his character and seeing the transformation of him, you know, go from Ronald to Titus, I think was just very fascinating overall. So I think either one of them have a very good chance of winning. But Keegan-Michael Key, again, this is his last year to win for Key and Peele, so I think he as well has a very good chance of winning. But we'll have to see what happens. I think it really is a toss over this one. Tony Hill, I think, probably is going to get it. I just don't know if he's going to get it again because he gets it every single year. But we'll have to see what happens. I'm saying supporting actor. I I think everyone really is very worthy and I think either any you know any of the actors I mentioned definitely do have a very good chance of winning. So for outstanding supporting actors in the comedy series we have Nisi Nash for getting on, Allison Janney for Mom, Kay McKinnon for Saturday Night Live, Judith Light for Transparent, Gabby Hoffman for Transparent, and Anna Klumsky for Veep. Now again I know Anna Klumsky has won many times and I don't know if she's going to get it again this year, but I believe Allison Janney actually won last year, if I remember correctly. I don't really remember, but Niecy Nash knows this is her last time um, getting it for getting on, so maybe she'll get it. I know a lot of people don't watch that show, and I know it's also not really a comedy, so I don't know about that one, but... Kate McKinnon, I heard that the reason Saturday Night Live is actually kind of good is because of Kate McKinnon, and we know how great she was in Ghostbusters. Now, I can't really say if she is that great, but... Again, I mean, yeah, we know how good she was in Ghostbusters, and I think she definitely has a very good chance of getting this, so we'll have to see what happens with that. Uh, I think Kate McKinnon, Anna Klumsky, you know, any of the ones I mentioned, definitely a very good chance. But I also want some transparent, so honestly, this one, again, is a toss-up for me. I don't watch these shows, so I can't really say who the front runner is, but that's what I have to say about that one. We'll have to see who gets it, and really, that will make the final decision as to who really wins. So outstanding lead actor in a comedy series, we have Anthony Anderson for Blackish, which who I heard is just great. Aziz Ansari for Master of None, William H Macy for Shameless, whatever. Thomas Middleditch for Silicon Valley, Will Forte for The Last Man on Earth, and Jeffrey Tambor for Transparent. Surprised that no one from Veep is on here, but um, very happy to see 
a lot of these nominations. I heard Thomas Mildish, one of the best parts of Silicon Valley. I've seen the first season. I've seen part of the second season. I just never um, caught up to it. I know I said it was going to, but I never did. So I probably will just binge, um, you know, the first three seasons before season four comes out next year. But we'll have to see what happens with that. Why is William H. Macy nominated? I'm sorry, but Frank is probably the worst part of Shameless right now. He's really bringing the show down. He's just really not needed anymore, and I don't know why he keeps getting nominated. He's just, he's a good actor, don't get me wrong, he's a really good actor, but I just feel the characters become really tiring. He's not really funny anymore, it's just kind of annoying, and I don't really know why he's nominated. Um... I think this is probably going to go to Jeffrey Tambor for Transparent. I know he's gotten it before. He is fantastic on that show. I've seen, like, the first three episodes of season one. He is fantastic from what I've seen. I really have loved the character. You know, I, the character is just so fascinating and so interesting, especially for, you know, now with all the transgender stuff going on. I think overall it's just a very, it's a very good character, and it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with that. Um, but Will Forte, Last Man on Earth, I heard he's very good in that. And then Aziz Ansari, Master of None. I mean, most of that show, he's the main character. There is no other, like, big main character in that. It's kind of just him the whole show. And it was very good from what I saw of it. So, I really don't know. I think Jeffrey Tambor is the front runner, But I think Aziz Ansari has a very good chance as well. So, we'll have to see what happens with that. Again, comedies, I don't know as much to say about because I don't watch these shows. Um, but that's what I have to say about that one. So, outstanding lead actress in a comedy series, we have Tracy Ellis Ross for Blackish, Lily Tomlin for Grace and Frankie, Ellie Kemper for Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, Laurie Metcalf for Getting On, Amy Schumer for Inside Amy Schumer, and Julia Lee Louise Dreyfus for Veep. Now, Julia Louise Dreyfus has gotten it every single year, and I know that, you know, she's very talented, so she definitely has a very good chance of getting it, but I don't know if she's going to. Let me just say two very big snubs. Where's Gina Rodriguez and where's Rachel um, Bloom? Because they both were very talented in Crazy Ex-Girlfriend Jane the Virgin, and all Crazy Ex-Girlfriend got was music stuff, and they won both of those things, but I wish it was nominated for a few more things. One of the best shows on TV, in my opinion, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, if you're not watching it, watch it now, because it's incredible, uh, but Ellie Kemper is a very good chance of winning this. I really love uh, the character of Kimmy Schmidt, and they really went more into her character this season, so I think she definitely has a good chance as well. I don't know if it's going to Julia Louise dreyfus uh, It might go to Amy Schumer. I actually really do like Amy Schumer. I think she's very funny. I know a lot of people don't, but I think she's very funny. So, Julia Louise Dreyfus, I just don't know if she's going to get it. She gets it every single year, so she probably will get it. But I really want to see Ellie Kemper or Amy Schumer get it. That's just kind of how I feel. So, we'll have to see what happens with that one. Um, but that's how what I have to say about uh, that category. And then we go to the big one, which, of course, is Outstanding Comedy Series, which we have, of course, Blackish, Master of None, Modern Family, Silicon Valley, Transparent, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, and Veeb. A lot of stuff nominated here, and a lot of stuff that's not really comedies. Like, Transparent's not really a comedy. There's fun moments, but it's definitely more of a dramedy than it is a comedy. Um, but I think Veep is probably going to get this. Like I said, it's won every single year for a while, so I think that's going to happen again this year, but if Veep weren't to get it, who would I say would get it? I don't know. I think Silicon Valley is a very good chance. I know a lot of people say it's one of the funniest shows on TV, so I know that one is a good chance of getting it, as well as Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. I'm a huge fan of the shows you guys know. I think it's a really funny show, and it's not always funny, but when it's funny, it's fucking hilarious, and I really do love everything about that. Sh I, I really do love pretty much everything about the second season I really did love, so I'd say in comedy series, I'd love to see Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt or Silicon Valley get it, though I think it's going to be, but that's really what I have to say about the comedy series. Sorry it was kind of vague about because I don't really know what to say about them because, like I said, I don't watch a lot of these shows, but I have a lot more to say, but of course, the last thing I know you guys want me to talk about, and that is Best Drama Series, so let's just get right into it because I have a lot to say when it comes to those categories. Alright guys, so now we get into the really big categories, the ones like I said that I have a lot to say about, starting off with Outstanding Writing for a Drama Series, we have Julian Fellows for Downton Abbey, Game of Th we have uh, David Benioff and D.B. Wise for Game of Thrones, Sam Esmall for Mr. Robot, Joe Fields and Joe Weisberg for The Americans, The Good Wife, I uh, mean Robert King and Michelle King for The Good Wife, and Marty Nixon, Shara Gertrude Shapiro for Unreal. Now, this one is very much a toss-up because a lot of these episodes are great, and especially the ones that um, 
they are written for, you know, there's four specific episodes, and the one they chose for Game of Thrones, Battle of the Bastards, is absolutely the one I would have chosen. I mean, David Benioff and, Dave, and D.B. Wise just wrote that to perfection. It was such an investing episode and such a thrilling episode as well. You know, an episode where you really didn't know what was going to happen, and I really love that. But of course, who can forget Sam Esmol's brilliant writing in Mr. Robot? The way he gets you introduced to those characters, um, the way he sets up that world is just one of the best beginnings in recent memory, and I love the writing of that show. And he's, you know, written every single episode to this season, so really gotta give him credit for that. There's not a lot of writers out there like Sam Esmol. He's very much an old-timey type, type of director that likes to, you know, write and direct things like you would an old movie, and I think he does that very well. Uh, but then Joel Fields and Joe Weisberg, they're nominated for the Americans, which let me just say, I am so happy that the Americans has finally gotten the recognition that it deserves this year, because the Americans, you know, for so many years has been, you know, been rejected from the Emmys, and I've said, oh, this person should have gotten this, or this person should have gotten that, but finally this year, they've nominated them for almost everything, and I am so happy about that, and the writing by Joel Fields and Joe Weisberg on the episode, you know, the finale of The Americans was perfect. It set up what Season 5 needed to be. It didn't do too much, but it did just enough to set up that story, and I really did love it overall. Why is The Good Wife nominated? I don't know. I heard the finale was terrible. I don't know why it's nominated, but I think it's probably going to be David Benioff and D.B. Wise for Game of Thrones. I mean, Battle of the Bastards is one of the best episodes they've ever done. Arguably the best episode of season six, one of the best reasons that season six was so great, and uh, definitely, for me at least, I mean, it just really shows why I love season six so much, why it was so character driven, and why it just, in my opinion, is the best season the show has given us, but I think Sam Esmol is just as good of a chance, so I think it's a toss between Sam Esmol and David Benioff and D.B. Wise, but again, we'll have to see a lot of really good choices, a lot of toss-ups, and really this entire category, all the drama categories, Everything really is a toss-up. There's nothing I'm 100% certain on, and that's mainly because of how, you know, what how great the caliber really is when it comes to what's nominated. So for Outstanding Directing for a Drama Series, we have Michael Engler for Downton Abbey, Jack Bender for Game of Thrones, Miguel Sabonechnik for Game of Thrones, sorry if I'm pronouncing the names wrong, Leslie Linka Gladder for Homeland, David Hollander for Ray Donovan, and Steven Soderbergh for The Nick. Now, let me just say that despite Game of Thrones being nominated twice, I honestly think that Steven Soderbergh here is the frontrunner for two reasons. One, he is by far one of the uh, best directors, I think, on TV. Just everything that he directs, he directs to perfection. It's exactly what he wants and his tone and things like that. Two, it's the last time he can be nominated for the show, because as you know, if the Nick does continue, Soderbergh's out. He's not doing the show anymore, so... I think that definitely he should win. I think he will win. Although Game of Thrones does have a good chance of winning, I feel like Steven Soderbergh, just his directing, it, there's just it's so immaculate, really. That's the best way to say it. It's immaculate, it's perfection, and just the attention to detail he has in his show and what he does for that show is fantastic. I know I stopped watching that show. I'm going to obviously continue it once it gets, you know, to uh, season three. Once it gets not, if it, if it does get renewed, then I will catch up on it. But The Nick is just an incredibly directed show. I think Steven Soberg absolutely deserves it. And I think there really is no question he should get it. He will get it. And I really don't feel like there is any other option here. He definitely should get it. And I'll be very surprised if he doesn't. Now, just like comedy, the next two categories I'm going to talk about already have winners, so I can't really predict, but for Outstanding Guest Actor in a Drama Series, we have Max Von Sido for Game of Thrones, Reggie Cathy for House of Cards, Marcella Ali for House of Cards, Paul Sparks for House of Cards, Hank Azaria for Ray Donovan, and Michael J. Fox for The Good Wife, and this went to Hank Azaria for Ray Donovan. I guess he was really good, I can't say much about it because I don't watch Ray Donovan, obviously. The only one I watch, actually, is the Three-Eyed Raven for Game of Thrones, but I guess he was really good in Ray Donovan. I don't watch Ray Donovan, so can't really comment on that, but congrats to Hank Azaria for him winning Outstanding Guest Actor in a Drama Series. And then the winner for Outstanding Guest Actress in a Drama Series, we have Laurie Metcalf for Horace and Pete, Molly Parker for House of Cards, Margo Martindale for The Americans, Ellen Bernstein for House of Cards, Allison Janney for Maps of Sex, and Carrie Preston for The Good Wife. And no surprise here, I am so happy that Margo Martindale got it for The Americans because... Yes, she wasn't in this season a ton, but when she was in it, she really did stick out. And Claudia's always been a very interesting character. I am so happy that she got it. 
I believe she's gotten it before, but I'm just very happy the Americans got a lot of stuff. Thank and you know, thank God that she got it, and congrats to her that she won. It's a good thing that she did get it <coughs> because. I don't know any of the other nominations here, but congrats to Margaret Marneau for getting outstanding guest actress in a drama series, um, because definitely she does deserve it, and like I said, it's the only one that I actually can talk about. So now we get to the big five categories that I have so much to say about, and, you know, such a tight race, and starting off with supporting actor in a drama series. Right off the bat, why wasn't Penny Dreadful nominated this year? I feel like a lot of stuff, you know, Penny Dreadful definitely was snubbed, definitely, out of everything. I really wanted to see that get some Emmy love, but it really didn't, and kind of disappointing that it didn't. But either way, outstanding supporting actor, we have Jonathan Banks for Better Call Saul, Peter Dinklage for Game of Thrones, Michael Kelly for House of Cards, Ben Mendelsohn for Bloodline, Kid Harrington for Game of Thrones, and John Voight for Ray Donovan. Now, Peter Dinklage, I'd usually say, is the frontrunner for Game of Thrones, but I really feel that Kit Harrington really came into his own this season. He took a character like Jon Snow, who we thought was good and dead, and made the character even better, and he gave Jon Snow this perseverance and just this edge to him that we hadn't seen before, and I obviously, I, I really think that Kid Harrington really should get this, and I'd be very happy to see him, and I'd be very surprised if he didn't get The only other person I could see getting this, possibly, is Jonathan Banks in Better Call Saul. I mean, he is fantastic as Mike Ehrmantraut, and he arguably is one of the best things about that show, but Kid Harrington, I feel, just slated this season, and if there's any season for him to get it, I think it is this season. He, just the Battle of, you know, Bastards episode alone, where he's thinking that he's gonna die, and there's that incredible one take scene with him in the battle. It's just an incredible scene overall. I think he absolutely should get it for that reason. I'd be very surprised if Peter Harrington didn't get it. I'd love to see him get it, and I think he should get it, though. I do think Jonathan Banks has a good chance. I believe John Voight won last year. I can't say much about him because, again, I don't watch Ray Donovan, but I'd love to see Kid Harrington get it. I'd be very surprised if he didn't, and for me, I think he should be the front runner for this one. So now we get to what is potentially the hardest, most closest race I think we're going to have in the entire show, and that is Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Drama Series, which, let's just get into it, because really everyone I think here is a frontrunner. We have Maggie Smith for Downton Abbey, Leon Heaty for Game of Thrones, Amelia Clark for Game of Thrones, Maura Turney for The Affair, Maisie Williams for Game of Thrones, and Constance Zimmer for Unreal. And like I said, I think all these are winners. First of all, Maggie Smith, this is her last year being nominated for Downton Abbey, because Downton Abbey, as we know, ended, and I know she's gotten it a lot, but I don't know if she's going to get it this year. I think this is definitely going to go to some from Game of Thrones. I think all three of them definitely deserve it. The one I think is least likely is Maisie Williams. Just not that she's bad. I just feel between Lena Headey and Amelia Clark, who both were just so great, mainly because, like I said, this season was about women power and women coming into their own and not letting men do everything for them. Very surprised Sophie Turner didn't get nominated, by the way, because she really was incredible here. Lena Headey, I feel, absolutely deserves it, though. I mean, she really took a character that I really despise, like Cersei, and made me love her character this season. I mean, this is a character that went through a lot of shits, and she was stomped on, and just chewed up, and no one wanted anything to do with her, and she rised above all of that in the end of this, in, at the end of the sixth season, to the point where I was kind of rooting for her, even though what she's doing is terrible, you're still kind of rooting for her. I think Lena Headey, just in general, that definitely should give her the performance. As good as Maura Turney is in the affair, she was really one of the only good things about that season. I still need to finish that season. I never finished it, but I think Lena Headey obviously does deserve it. Amelia Clark, I mean, Daenerys is great, but Lena Headey just definitely deserves it. I don't see a scenario where she doesn't get it. I think it's either going to be her or Amelia Clark. Maggie Smith, like I said, she's great, but I just don't think this is going to be her year. It would be great to see Constance Zimmer get it, but again, unreal. After season two, I don't know if she has as good of a chance. This might be her only time she'll be nominated because I don't think they're going to be nominated for anything next year, but we'll have to see. I think Lena Headey obviously deserves it. She really came into her own this season and made me, you know, love a character that I despised and... I really lo would love to see her get it. Amelia Clark would be great too, but I really think it's a toss between those two. Again, it's a very tight race, though, so I can't really predict a winner because I think everyone really does deserve uh, the nominations here, but it's going to be really interesting to see what ends up happening. And, you know, of course, what ends up happening will ultimately show who the winner is. 
All right, guys, so here we go. The three biggest ones I want you, you guys to know what you're talking about, starting off with Outstanding Lead Actor. We have Bob Odenkirk for Better Call Saul, Kevin Spacey for House of Cards, Liev Schreiber for Ray Donovan, Kyle Chandler for Bloodline, Rami Malek for Mr. Robot, sorry, I'm just so happy he got nominated, and Matthew Reese for The Americans. And I am so happy about those last two. I am so happy with Rami Malek, and I am so happy with Matthew Reese because they absolutely own those roles. Not that Bob Odenkirk isn't great. He's great, but I think he's going to have other years to get it. And I don't know if this year is his year. He was great this year, and he really was fantastic as Jimmy. I mean, I love I loved Better Call Saul even more this year, you guys know. I loved it last year, but I loved it even more this year. Kyle Chandler... He's great on Bloodline, but I just don't really think he's going to get it. Rami Malek, I feel, has this in the bag. He, There is no reason why he shouldn't get it. Everything that's great about Mr. Robot is because of Elliot, and the show would not be as compelling if we didn't have an Elliot Alderson. Between the unri unreliable narrator and what he's able to do, just t a lot of the shit that he does in that show is just incredible, and the way that just... He's one of those, like, facial actors. Just by seeing on his face, you can tell what he's feeling, and he does such a great job with that. I love everything about Rami Malek. He's a fantastic actor, and I really want to see him get it. But Matthew Rees, I mean, this has been a long time coming, and I mean a long time. Like, I've said every single year, Matthew Rees needs to get nominated. Matthew Rees needs to get nominated, and finally, he is nominated this year. It would be great to see him get it, but the Americans has two years left. Mr. Robot does as well, but I feel like there's really no reason why Rami Malek shouldn't get this. He is just phenomenal in this role. I'd love to see him get it, and I'd be very surprised if he doesn't get it, because he's just everything about that show, and he was this guy who I'd never heard of before. I'm like, who's Rami Malek? If he would have asked me who he was before Mr. Robot, I would not have known, but now he's this huge star. Everyone seems to know Rami Malek is. He's getting casted in movies. I mean, he really has a huge future ahead of him, and I really want to see him get, you know, win. I think he is just phenomenal in that show. He is one of the best act. He might be my, I think he is the best actor on TV right now. I don't think there's really any other contest, and if he doesn't win, I'd be very surprised, but either him or Matthew Rees, I'd love to see either of them get it, but again, we'll have to see what happens tonight. So now we go to Outstanding Lead Actress, which there are a lot of potential uh, winners here. We have Taraji B. Henson for Empire, Claire Danes for Homeland, Robin Wright for House of Cards, Viola Davis for How Gay Way of Murder, Tatiana Mussolini for Orphan Black, and Carrie Russell for The Americans, which again, long time coming. How was Eva Green not nominated, though? I have no idea. She is by far one of the best things about that show. She absolutely just stole the entire show as Vanessa. I mean, there's so much great uh, talent across the border, but I have no idea how she was not nominated uh, for Vanessa Ives. It'll be the last time she could have been. So it really sucks that Penny Dreadful did not get nominated here. I would have wanted to see or get it, but she didn't. Um, I think, I honestly don't know who this is going to go to. I think Taraji B. Henson, you know, she's great as Cookie. I don't really know if she's going to get it, though. I feel like Tatiana Maslany, this is her year. I mean, let's think about it. She's gone from playing four characters to playing, I think, almost ten characters, and almost every character on the show is her. So, Tatiana Maslany, I think there's no reason why she shouldn't get this. I mean, I'm so surprised. I've been so surprised that she's never gotten it before. I'd love to see her get it, but again, Carrie Russell. I mean, Elizabeth this season was just so complex, and they really really did so much with her character. You had someone who doesn't show a ton of emotion and usually isn't as affected by missions and put her in situations where she is affected and, and situations where she does feel emotion and someone where she is, you know, where she is, uh, you know, she does actually feel some empathy and sympathy for something and I really love what they did with her character so Tatiana Maslany or Carrie Russell I'd love to see either of them get it Robin Wright I don't know I really don't want to see her get it Claire Danes as well I think she was good on the season of Homeland she wasn't great but I think she definitely has a chance of getting it I just don't want to see her get it but again we'll have to see what happens tonight uh, I think it's going to be a real toss up between those two and uh, that's definitely something that I'm looking forward to is like I said very happy about Carrie Russell but I really think Tatiana Maslany should get it She's been nominated every year since Orphan Black started. I don't know why she hasn't won it. She has one more year to win it um, next year, and if she doesn't win it this year, then definitely she needs to win it because she only has, like, two years left. So now we get to the biggest category, the one that I definitely have a lot to say about, and I know you guys want to hear what I have to say. So Outstanding Drama Series, let's just get right into it. So the nominees are Better Call Saul, Down to Navi, Game of Thrones, Homeland, House of Cards, Mr. Robot, and The Americans, which I believe that's the longest amount of nominations they've had for this category. There's usually only four or five, but I believe there's like six this year. 
And I'm very high with that because all these shows very much deserve it. Homeland, not so much. I mean, Homeland's a good show, but it's not great, I think, anymore. Uh, Downton Abbey, though, this is, like I said, their last year, so I could very much see Downton Abbey getting it. I don't want to see them get it, but I very well could see them getting it. Um, but Mr. Robot, I mean, come on, Mr. Robot, I am so... Uh, happy that Mr. Robot got stuff. By the way, why was The Leftovers not nominated? I have no idea why. I'm not going to go on a whole thing about it, but you guys know The Leftovers is, in my opinion, the best show on TV, and I have no idea what they were thinking. I don't know if they judged it by ratings or if they judged it by fans, but The Leftovers is such a big fan base, and it did so much more great stuff last season. I have no idea why it was nominated. I honestly... It's, it, it's, I'm baffled why it wasn't nominated. I'm, I'm appalled that it wasn't. It just doesn't make any sense, but either way, Mr. Robot, I think that should be the one to get this. I'd love to see it get just the visual style and the story overall. There's nothing on TV really like Mr. Robot, and there really isn't. I mean, I can't really think of a show that's like that, and... I'd love to see Mr. Robot get it. I think it very much deserves it. Americans as well, though, like I said, this has been a long time coming, so it would be awesome to see them get it. Uh, I really don't know, though. There's a lot of really great winners in here. Better Call Saul is great. You know, Game of Thrones, I think, could get it this year. So I really don't know who's going to get it, but we will have to see uh, what ends up happening. And uh, Outstanding Drama, you know, by far is usually the hardest category. It's very hard this year. Again, I don't know why Leftovers wasn't nominated, but if it couldn't have been nominated, I'd love to see the winner. I love to see the nominations that are here and overall I'm very satisfied uh, with the nominations this year. And that's it, guys. Those are all my predictions uh, for the Emmys. Those are all the categories I'm going to talk about. If there was a category I forgot, just let me know. If you guys want to PM you know, me my thoughts or something like that, I'll just tell you how I feel about the category and who I think is going to win. But either way, it's going to be a very tight race this year. I really don't know what's going to happen to a lot of these categories. And I could be very dead wrong. There have been times where I have been wrong and that I haven't been you know, write about something, so we'll have to see what happens with that, I really don't know uh, who the front runner is, a lot of them I do, but I, some of them I feel like I'm very wrong on, so we'll have to see, uh, but anyways guys, you guys know how I usually do a live stream, I will of course be doing a live stream for the Emmys, but that's actually going to be on my second channel, mainly because of the fact that I have a copyright strike on here for some bullshit reason, so I can't uh, do live stream on this channel, I will leave a link to the live stream in the description below, as well as a link to all of the nominations if you guys want to check it out. But anyways, guys, let me know what you guys think of all the nominations this year. Who do you think is going to win? And hopefully you guys join me um, for my Emmy live stream. Definitely enjoy the Emmys tonight, but that's a matter of this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And we'll see you guys next week, which won't be for the Emmy live stream. It will be for a movie review, and we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.